Well, good morning. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. I want to talk to you this morning about adjustments. That's something we're all familiar with. On every agreement of purchase and sale, on Schedule A, we say the buyer agrees to pay the balance of the purchase price. We say how they're going to pay it as certified check, bank draft, e-transfer, and then we add subject to adjustments. Now, typically when we think about adjustments, we're thinking about taxes. And as you know, if you, as a homeowner, if you're paying your taxes, you're either paying it when you're billed by the municipality, which is probably four times a year, or you have equal monthly payments. If it's equal monthly payments, it's over 10 payments, and you get a break the last two months of the year. But what it means is whenever you pick any date on the calendar, you're either ahead of the game or behind the game as far as your taxes are concerned. And so on closing, the lawyer calculates out exactly where the taxes are. Had there been some taxes prepaid, which the buyer's gonna have to reimburse the seller, or are the taxes due, and the seller's gonna have to reimburse the buyer by way of adjustments. There used to be a lot more adjustments. There was a time, in fact, when it was the norm to assume the seller's insurance policy. And in fact, what you would do is you would calculate out a per diem rate and how long the policy has left to run, and that would be calculated in adjustment. That's been now moved to the requisition portion of the agreement, and it states that the lawyer will make sure there's no cloud on title, and that the principal property or building may be insured against fire. And so that is no longer an adjustment. And we think about utilities, we think about hydro, we think about gas, we think about water and sewer, and all these things, they may have one time been adjustments, but now the lawyer calls for a reading the day prior to closing, and it transfers into the new owner's name, and he takes over from the day of closing forward. So those aren't adjustments. But there is one adjustment we need to keep in mind, and that is oil. Now we're not seeing that so much because more and more homeowners over the years have elected to change their heating system from oil to gas. And so we're not running across it very often. But when we do, an adjustment for oil is very, very important. What happens is you've got a 200 gallon tank in your basement to hold oil. And it's not fair that the buyer should get some of the oil that the sellers paid for. But how do you know whether there's 30 gallons, 50 gallons, or 150 gallons in that tank? How do you know how much to charge the buyer? So what is the custom is the lawyer calls the seller just prior to closing to fill the tank right up to the top, and then the buyer is charged for 200 gallons, usually, of oil. Well, that's a fair chunk of change. These days, with oil prices being what it is, you're going to get an eight or $900 adjustment uh, on your closing when you sit down with your lawyer for oil heating. And uh, when, when buyers are stretched to the limit to buy a new home, uh, they're very concerned about all their costs, about the legal costs, about the land transfer costs and so on. And to get hit with an unexpected $800 bill is really a challenge. It's something you need to talk to your buyers about. I received a call just the other day from a consumer who had bought a house recently, and she wanted to know if this was the norm. All of a sudden, she got hit with a huge bill on closing for oil. Not that, you know, they're not paying more. If you're heating your home with gas, you pay it in dribs and drabs. You pay it after you use it. If you're heating with oil, you pay it in a big chunk, and you pay it before you use it. So it's the way the bill comes in, but it's still a shock, a sticker shock, to the system. So if you are representing a buyer, and if that buyer is buying a home that's heated by oil, you need to sit down and talk to them about adjustments and prepare them for closing for this adjustment for oil. Now let me say one other thing when we're talking about oil, heat, adjustments, and so on. When you're having this conversation with your buyer about oil, ask them if their intention is to stay with oil heat or if they're going to convert to gas. See, often the buyer has every intention of converting to gas. If you're going to change your system from oil to gas, you don't want to have 200 gallons of oil sitting in that tank. The only way you're going to get that tank out of the house is if it's empty. In fact, you may have to cut it open with a blowtorch to get it out of there. So you don't want any oil in the tank. And if you decide to put in a gas furnace and you've got a half or three quarters of a tank oil sitting there, you've got a problem. You may have to drain it and that's not going to be simple. So what you want to do is have that tank as close to empty as possible. So have the conversation with your buyer, and if you find that the buyer is planning right away and converting it from gas, from oil to gas, then you might want to put a clause in the agreement of purchase and sale that says that the seller states and the buyer acknowledges that the home is currently 
heated by oil. It is the buyer's intent as quickly as possible after closing to convert to gas. Accordingly, there will be no adjustment for oil on closing. The seller will not fill the tank. And in fact, the seller will use every effort to try and utilize the oil to make the tank as close to empty as possible on closing. Can you do that? Sure. You can do anything you want as long as the buyer and seller agree. It's in writing and that's legal. So you might want to put that in, but regardless, have that conversation with your buyer when it's oil heat. Talk to them about adjustments, talk to them about adjustments for oil, and talk to them about their future plans. Hope that makes sense. Thank you very much for investing the time to watch this video. I'll talk to you again next week.